Well, we encourage you to cash out. Goes with the short code star four three nine hash. You have to choose option two, and with option two, you know that we had uh, the mega jackpot on Friday, and we'll be doing that as ma as many times as we can each week, and uh, it's depending also on what you have to do to make sure that you're in a great position um, to always win. So choose option two this morning. Now, when you choose option two, it also means that you have to increase the number of tickets that you have. Let's make sure that we're able to make this um, some great insight. Begin a great week. The number of uh, already great development so far. We told you about, we're told that the campaign team of Cynthia Morrison and um, had been attacked, so to speak. But we want to get some clarity based on what we've been able to establish and though that alleged attack will subsequently make sure we're able to get in touch with her and, and get really inside into what transpired to make sure that we're in a position to deal with what the real <coughs> facts are. But we also have to tell you that we're in for some great discussions. And uh, let me say good morning to a number of you who have joined us. Uh, we're grateful. Uh, Stella Nadine Swade, you're a speech therapist based in Accra. Great friend. I wish you all the best for the day. For those who have joined us also on our stream, we're grateful. Make sure you share the stream. Let's have some great conversation. This morning, I want to deal with um, uh, 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 just a, a substantive issue. The finance minister is in the United States of America. You know, uh, we have the Bretton Woods institutions having a meeting, and subsequently, the finance minister has been on a roadshow undertaking a lot of interactions. What he, he did say that seems to be, in my estimation, good news, is that apparently when we did uh, the, the exchange program for our debts, we saved $12 billion, $12 billion. So that's uh, good news for many people who want to think about it in that way. So we encourage you. Daniel Akpaliok, you've joined us, Money New Money. Um, also, Laurentia, and a couple of you, Nelson Akotia, you've joined us as well. Asari, uh, Philip Miles, and um, also has joined us. Evans Ibn Samba, Patrick Kugbesika, good morning. And let me just introduce Kamal Dean Abdelai. Good morning to you. Currently, is the Consular General for Ghana, based uh, in Saudi Arabia. How are you? I'm good. Um, yeah, good. It's been good a while. Good to have you back, yes. Yeah, good to, back. good to be here. Okay, mashallah. And then also, Edu Jitamaklo, thank you for joining us, um, lawyer. Good morning. Okay. And good morning to my colleagues. All right. And then also... Lawyer Pierre Dankwa is also here. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, uh, morning to my colleagues and to the US here. Now, we'll begin with the finance minister in New York, having some interactions. Part of our arrangement with the IMF, we decided to restructure our debts, to bring our debts to sustainable uh, levels. We started with our domestic debt uh, restructuring and the sacrifices of our people. Uh, ensure that we concluded uh, that restructuring with about 95% uh, or more participation. So it was greatly a success. Uh, we followed that with the restructuring of our bilateral uh, debt with our bilateral creditors. That was also very successful in, in negotiation between us and the official creditor committee for Ghana. And this led to a uh, significant savings, debt service relief of about 2.8 billion US dollars. And then following this is our restructuring of the euro bonds. The euro bonds, about 13 billion uh, US dollars. Uh, that was concluded in the first week of this month. Uh, another great success because we saw over 98% participation in the debt exchange. Um, the benefits we have derived from this so far includes an outright debt cancellation of about $5 billion and another debt service relief of about $4.3 billion. And so between the bilateral creditors and the euro bonds, you are talking about savings of about 12 billion uh, US dollars. So we think this is a very great success. We are still having an outstanding uh, restructuring with our commercial creditors involving about 2.7 billion dollars. We are working very hard to conclude that. So, so far, uh, I can say that we, we have been pretty successful uh, at our restructuring. The participation has been great and we see ourselves uh, moving on the path to debt sustainability. So on the path of sustainability, so we have to do a certain recall. Um, what by 2022, 
even though when the warnings had been coming that we were heading into a ditch where the liabilities as far as what the debts are with our creditors. Because in total, we had an external debt, 58%. And as you can see, um, you take a look at it, 37.4 billion. And then subsequently, you also have um, the domestic debt as well being 42% of the debt in itself. Now, subsequently, we decided then to do a DDEP. Let's uh, go to the next. So the DDEP meant that at the time, we had to do a restructuring of debt with a component of our creditors being insurance companies being uh, just less 1% uh, of the debt. Rural banks also being a component of 1.4%. Pension funds, uh, includes NITS uh, and, uh, and, and its trustees as well, combined uh, over 7% or just about 6.8%. The Bank of Ghana itself, 9%. Commercial banks, and we're talking about our banks, whether they're local or international operating here, 33%. And then we had institutional investors in our bonds and our debts, so to speak, including even firms. And then individual bondholders, you do a combine of it, you have about 39%. Now, foreign investors also play a key role in buying a lot of uh, government bonds. So they also are there. Then we came with the external. The euro bonds formed about uh, 13.1 billion. You take a look at um, all that we have. China, 1.7 billion. The, pa the Paris Club, 1.7. Other commercial entities. And so when you go into the money market, and so it means that that's what it is. Or the capital market. So uh, 3.2 billion, and then subsequently multilateral. 8.1 billion. The finance minister says that we saved 12 billion. So yes, I had some interaction with some um, few people who are in academia, and the question they posed is, if you save 12 billion, you shouldn't be owing people, at least locally. But how do we communicate that so that perhaps there's a better explanation? We'll have... Um, Dr. Ganiu, who is a technical advisor to the finance minister, to just come and chip in. But in the meantime, uh, Kamal Dean, great news. In the cycles of government, somebody will say, but for in, uh, individual bondholders, institutional bondholders, we've had Joe Jackson, etc., questioning the sort of communication. It's as if to send a, a signal positively that everything is fine while people are wailing, on the other hand, just because we bought government credits and government cannot just pay them. Well, thank you very much. And um, once again, very good morning to you. Um, good morning to my brother, um, Eddie G, and of course to Lawyer Pia. Um, let me seize this opportunity to congratulate Ghana's Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, um, Honorable Shelley Ayoko Butri. Um, she is now the Secretary General of Commonwealth elect waiting to take office um, somewhere in April 2025. Um, it was by dint of hard work, I guess, that she got there. Um, we would have to congratulate her once it is the lifting of the flag of Ghana high um, for all of us or to all of us. Again, I would say a very good morning to all um, viewers and listeners um, at large. Roland, yes, Ghana went through debt exchange program or debt restructuring program. Factors necessitated that. What are those factors? Yes, did we owe? Did we borrow? I agree. Perfectly, we borrowed. <clears throat> And did we borrow for infrastructure development and for the upkeep of our economy? Yes, so. We got to a level where lots of, you know, um, occurrences came in to, if you like, 
present certain shocks to the economy or present some you know uh, challenges to the economy and the major one not just only ghana was COVID, which we all agree every single economy in this world that saw a trajectory of growth with the emergence or coming into being of COVID, so the economy knows diving. Every single country in this world, not just Ghana. And you agree with me that when I say factors brought us to the level where we needed to restructure our debts, okay, and mention borrowing, and mention the growth trajectory, you would also agree with me that indeed, these external shocks that I've spoken about, or I'm talking about, saw us not moving not just ghana but many countries and by that we had to go back to look into ourselves and say mm, if this has happened and these are projections that we have made this is the way we wanted to go and we could not achieve that what do we have to do we needed a solution with solution and not just only ghana again many countries were professed the solution of restructuring your debt to make them sustainable and these are facts that is the more reason why we needed to do an internal one and do an external one. Then we get our economy to see whether it will rebound or not. And Randy, um, Roland, you agree with me that yes, where we are today. If you look at the figures, I am not an economist and I don't pretend to be one. But of course, I read whatever is there and of course, I experience what is there as well. You agree with me that by virtue of the fact that we have been able to restructure those debts, okay, and the finance minister you know clearly made us understand that these were the benefits that we got from restructuring of the debts when you go out there some debts were even forgiven us to the tune of almost five billion if you like dollars according to the finance minister when you look at out there some debt servicing reliefs have actually been given us now if we were to pay to pay maybe um this amount at this time by virtue of the fact that we have restructured and then agreed with the creditor, we say, okay, we are moving it from here to this. Therefore, some relief. As a result of the relief, we are getting some, if you like, benefits out of it. Some amount of money there, 4.3 or so billion. If you come home, we did our internal debt restructuring again, and some amount of money was actually, um, you know, uh, chucked again. In terms of benefit so putting all together the finance minister said look it was essential it was important that we go in for such a solution or such you know program having gone into the program the amount of money that we have realized not as in cash giving us as a country but looking at the debt servicing relief looking at the um you know the cancellation of debt and looking at also the reprieve that we are going to have in terms of debt servicing, either locally or internally, putting all together or aggregating together, some close to $12 billion, okay, it saved us. For us to be able to cushion ourselves and rebound as an economy. So indeed, if you look at our macro economy today, okay, everything points to the fact that indeed we have a future that looks good. To the extent that even looking at the GDP growth, projections will may be higher. In 2025 there about all these actually have are, are on so it tells you that there are some technical hands on board there's some work being done and the debt exchange program indeed even though it came with some negatives obviously some bondholders had caused to you know also this um, picketing and all those things a whole lot of problems came in but nonetheless if we had moved from a particular level and based on some reasons we got ourselves into challenges and we decided to go into a solution. Which solution was the restructuring, both internal and external. And the restructuring completely or successfully done. Based on this, the finance minister says, look, this is the outcome of what we have done. I think that we should be loading the technical hands on board. We should be loading whoever is the manager of the economy right now. Of course, if we had done this, finished this, and then the future still looked bleak, that would have been dangerous. So you're To the extent that inflation moved to 54%. In this country before today as we sit the the, the, the managers of 54 percent yes at the point because because yes what account for that inflation 
I just I told you the external shocks. I told you what happened to every single economy okay. in this country. So, so Kamal Dia, yes. are you saying that Ghana going bankrupt, going to its creditors to restructure its debts, mm -hmm. both domestically and externally, mm -hmm. is a good thing? I just told you that it wasn't for Ghana alone to say I am going for debt structuring. It was because the international economies that we have, the bigger economies even, even COVID, UK, Russia, UK. Talk of UK, talk of US, talk of Australia, COVID, every Russia, single UK. country that matters in this country, I mean in this world, okay, went through this. And I'm saying, Ghana did not just assume to say that, look, we are going to, uh, if you like, um, uh, debt restructuring. Conditions necessitated that. That's the point I made. And I'm saying that, Based on those conditions, our economies were affected. And Ghana's economy wasn't left out. Okay? Why? 2017, we didn't talk of that. We never contemplated on even going to IMF. 2018, we never contemplated on that. 2019, no. We're moving. Until almighty COVID came in. And this is the fact people do not want to hear. Which people do not want to hear? So, whatever. They may say yes. Whoever wants to say that, look, there was... There is a reason why Ghana decided that, look, let us go for debt exchange program, I mean, debt restructuring. And not just only Ghana, many countries did that. And I'm saying that because of this, these external shocks that affected our economy and affected other economies, we had no option than to say, hey, wait a minute. If we plan paying this money this time, because of X, Y, Z, our economy actually has nosedive. And we cannot have money to do that. Let us go and engage our creditors and then see what we can do. So I thought that there was a reason why they did that. It also means that the finance minister saying we saved 12 billion also means that should be good news for he says they say yes. So you see, <clears throat> when a country is given to you to govern and out of unbridled corruption, reckless spending, among many, you drive the economy to its knees into zero to a point where the economy begins to register a debt to gdp ratio of 104 what you demonstrate is candor what you demonstrate is responsibility and a certain level of remorse but the people who are in charge of governance today out of arrogance Share decision to gaslight the people. They look you in the face and tell you that they have saved us money. Because they say Russia and COVID right. in Ukraine. You have not saved us anything. What you have done is to impoverish our people. As we speak today, by raising solely of the domestic debt exchange program, personal bondholders, Persons who bought government of Ghana bonds and security instruments have lost 61 billion Ghana cities. And you come here and tell me it's a savings. How is that a savings? What you need to ask yourself fundamentally is that before Akufado became president, before Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya became the chairman of the economic management team, has Ghanaian ever gone through a DDP? That is the fundamental question. If you don't answer that question, you are being mischievous and dishonest. External shocks. He talks about external shocks. First of all, COVID-19. You know the problem. The 2020 election spending, for the first time since 1992, we had a budget deficit of 15%. As if, when was the last time that we had a budget deficit of 15% since 1992? That is where the problem is. Akufado desire, together with Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, to win the 2020 election at all costs, resulted in a budget deficit of 15%. That is what we are trying to recover from. They dug a deep hole, bottomless hole, and that from 2020, we've been struggling to fill that hole. That is what the problem is. And not COVID-19. I've heard MPP communicators say COVID-19. First of all, you claim that by reason of COVID-19, 
you had a budget, a, a, a revenue shortfall of 14 billion. Even let's say for the sake of argument, it's true. That same year, you had uh, the IMF giving you $1 billion rapid credit facility. You went for another $1 billion, the special drawing rights. The IMF, uh, the World Bank alone gave you $600 million. South Korea gave you $83 million. Germany gave you so much money. You went to the Bank of Ghana and borrowed $10 billion, Ghana cities. Within COVID, within one election cycle. So even if COVID resulted in revenue shortfall of 14 billion, you net it against the money you made by reason only of COVID-19. You made over 21 billion Ghana cities. So COVID was a game. You were just irresponsible. You were just corrupt. You were just in fact they stole Ghana's money painfully. How how how, how, how do you explain? I'll that? tell you this. You know, Akufuado, when in 2020 decided to go to the IMF, the IMF demanded an audit of COVID funds. That COVID was not uh, 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 audit was not done by Domelevo. It was done by Akufuado's appointed uh, uh, auditor general, Mrs. Uh, Johnson something something. Now that report says, and I want to reference it, it says that 500 million Ghana cities of COVID money was spent outside Gifmes. It's only a thief that will spend money outside Gifmes. Do you know why? They want to avoid tracing. Because the Gifmes system is a mechanism by the finance ministry itself, captured under the Ghana uh, 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 the, uh, Public Financial Management Act. It is a mechanism to ensure transparency. It's a mechanism to catch the thief. So what Akufuado Baumia did in 2020 is to spend 500 million Ghana cities out of mm. Gitmes. Thieves. And they didn't want anybody to trace where the money went. Election spending. And you dare say what? COVID-19, Russia, Ukraine. Today, even Ukraine and Russia, where the bombs are dropping, they are doing better. You know what the problem was? Akufado brought his brother. How does his brother become Please. an issue here? Akufado brought his brother as our finance minister. We thought they were coming to govern. We never knew they were into plunder. So, from 2017 to 2021, Eurobond alone, 11 billion dollars. So once your finance minister was doing the Eurobond borrowing, he was making money for the Akufuado family. I don't understand. The explanation is that Data Bank has also been, uh, if you take a look, uh, a key bookmarker for Ghana. At the time when Data Bank was there, Data Bank CEO or founder was not the one designing the quantum of how much we borrow and commission to pay. Look at the airline, the public financial management regulation. Is the finance minister. So you have a situation where the finance minister was now deciding that I have to go and borrow two billion. And guess what? He was doing consistently two billion dollars of euro bond borrowing annually. In fact, in the year 2022, he wanted to go and do further euro bond borrowing. Then the credit rating agencies downgraded us. That is what stopped us from doing that. But you see, the painful part so that I can just please wrap up for me. If you look at the data, and I have the data here, if you look at the data, allocation to the Office of Government Machinery, that is where the issues are. Look, in 2017, 1.5 billion was allocated to the Office of Government Machinery. 2018, 1.9 billion. 2019, now listen up, from 1.9 billion in 2018, to 3.6 billion office of government machinery 2020 2.5 billion 2021 3.1 billion this is where your money is going to the office of government machinery now you know the painful part whilst Ghanaians are wallowing in pain agony while the hardship is beating everybody to rate our president decided to have a lifestyle 
of you know using luxurious private jets paying eighteen thousand dollars in some instances now painfully 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 and i want to maybe conclude on this you see if you roland you have money would you do 58 million dollars on a cathedral i don't you're you're saying that mm. there's been unprioritized expenditure absolutely 58 million dollars in building a hole in digging a hole a useless hole for that matter Two million on sky train. Where is the sky train? Rona, as you speak, ask this man. He just came back from Saudi. Ask him, where is the sky train that they spent two million dollars on? Forty million dollars on a so-called a Japan yeah, deal right. that became a fiasco. Please wrap up. Two point five million dollars on mortar angel. All this money. You think it, it belongs to Akufa? And this is a man together with Balmia who preached. That we are going to protect the public purse. Is that how to protect the public purse? Well, DJ, um, going see, forward with what you've said, we will need some clarification. I listen, from, I listen to from, from Dr. No, so, so that Dr. Campson. Oh, today we are two MPP reps. No, it's that's, not MPP. No, no, that's fine. Right. It doesn't matter. He's an MPP person. He's a, he's a technical see, advisor. The, 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 finance the, minister. The, the, finance, the finance minister, the finance minister okay. made a point. He said, oh, participation. How was that participation? The, the former chief justice, so for Akuf, uh, Akufo makes this point. He said the DDP was like a military coup. And that even under military regimes, they respected the rights of citizens. Mm. Government basically imposed the DDP on people. Personal bondholders, persons who have saved their money to use in retirement, to buy diabetes drugs, BP drugs, have lost all their money. And you sit here and tell Ghanaians what? Look, now let's bring Dr. Gadi. What is going on is painful. And you guys, the least you can do Dr. is Gadi, to good morning to you for this incompetence, not to come and sit on national Hello. television and gas like Dr. that. Dr. Gadi, good morning. Yes, good morning. Okay, uh, great to have you uh, as a technical advisor to the finance minister. Um, the question then is, you take a, a look at what the concerns have been raised by the institutional bondholders, the individual bondholders, and then also all the concerns that have been raised by even economists who have said government in the run-up to the 2022 period just didn't prioritize this expenditure and so should also partly take the blame for where we are today. Do you think that the communication coming from the finance minister, $12 billion made in savings, etc., tends to create some level of empathy for those who took part not only in our domestic um, bond restructuring, but also even for the external creditors, and why? Well, um, thank you very much, and uh, good morning to your viewers, to your listeners, and of course to my colleagues in the studio. Um, first, it's important to correct an impression. The topic for discussion is domestic debt exchange program saved Ghana four billion US dollars. That is exactly what I'm seeing on your screen right now. That is incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. Indeed, at the very start of this program, you played a video. Go back and listen to the finance minister. It's important that we often go beyond the headline. As is often said, the devil is in the detail. And indeed, when I read the story that was put out first by one of your sister stations, if you go through, the finance minister indicated two broad categories of debt restructuring. First is the domestic debt exchange program or the domestic debt restructuring. And then the second is the external debt restructuring. The 12 billion savings that has been put out is in respect of the external debt restructuring. It has nothing to do with the DDEP. And the Ministry of Finance or the, or the minister himself has not at any point indicated that we have made savings in respect of the DDEP and then put out any figure. So Roland, 
that is the first correction that has to be made on this program. And indeed, it was the reason why I sought to make this very important intervention. Now, how did we come by that 12 billion US dollars so far as savings on the restructuring of our external debt is concerned? If you look at our bilateral debt, at the time we were announcing a debt service suspension in December of 2022, we were supposed to restructure about 5.1 billion US dollars owed to our bilateral creditors. The bilateral creditors that we owed constituted themselves into the OCCs under the G20 common framework as well as uh, arrangements within the Paris Club. And we are seeing that the debt service moratorium that was announced based on the MOU that we reached with the bilateral creditors is going to save Ghana a debt service savings of 2.8 billion US dollars. So between 2023 and 2026, we are not servicing any debt in respect of principal, in respect of interest rates, and going beyond from 2027, when we resume the servicing of these debts, the interest rates are also going to be lower. If you put that figure together, it's 2.8 billion. Mm. And then we also announced an agreement with the Eurobond holders that is part of the commercial debts that we owe. And the Eurobond, the total debts under that is 13 billion US dollars. We are saying that with that agreement, there is a nominal haircut of 37%, which amounts to 4.7 billion US dollars. So these are monies that Ghana would have paid, but as a result of the restructuring, we are not going to pay that to the euro bond holders, and it's 4.7 billion. Now, depending on the option that any euro bond holder goes for, whether it's a power menu, it's a disco, and what's not, we are also talking about a reduction in the interest rates, mm -hmm. which will amount to an amount of 4.4 billion. So if you take your calculator, put 2.8 billion, add that 4. to 4.4 billion, billion, add that to 4.7 billion, and you are getting 12 billion. So it's in respect of the external debt. It has nothing to do with the DDP. Now, it has been put out as if government is insensitive. We embarked on a domestic debt restructuring, and we are happy about the fact that we saved an amount of four billion. And yet, individual bond holders and what's not within the domestic economy are suffering. That is that is not the case at all. In fact, we've always indicated that we love and commend the sacrifices that the good people of this country have made. We agree that that process was very, very painful. And indeed, we believe that whatever measures we are putting in place going forward, at no point are we going to default so as far as the servicing of debt, whether it's within the domestic economy or it is the external economy, is concerned. And those practical measures have been put in place. The finance minister has instituted what we call the monthly economic update. Your correspondence do come there all the time. So, so as far as the economy and the finance data is concerned, I'm sure everyone now has access to that so easily. And that is why it baffles me that these kind of inaccurate headlines are being put out there. And sometimes you wonder what the reasons are. So well, I'm truly I'm not happy. I mean, my minister is equally not happy about that. Play the video again and you would understand clearly what the details are. And indeed, we have consistently indicated that we are sorry about that painful experience that individual bond holders in our country went through, but we had to do it to save our economy. And that is where we are. But the most important thing is that the exchange that took place, we have been no point so as far as the payment of maturing coupons are concerned right from January this year up to date, we have gone by that schedule. And I'm sure that is why you don't hear a lot of agitation these days. Because anytime they are due, they are paid. You know, and 
going forward, all other measures that we have put in place will ensure that we save the domestic bond market when we return to issuing bonds and at the same time create the confidence that the external economy needs so as far as their dealings with Ghana is concerned. So that, 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 that is where we are. Now, Dr. Ganyu, it is also important for all of us to note and also point out, if that is correct, that the communication by the finance minister during his interactions on his roadshows, in his meeting with the IMF as well as the other Bretton Woods institutions, sought to create the impression that because domestic debt exchange has been achieved considerably, and despite the concerns that have been raised by, well, the bondholders themselves, but subsequently also the external bondholders, there are key players within the external creditor market who play important roles also in the domestic debt market, correct? Well, but, but, but these are but these, uh, external, if you want, creditors. That's the most important thing. So right. you have to get that categorization right. Yeah. So, so, um, that, so um, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter hmm. where they are. The most important thing is that when bonds have been floated on the external market, anybody who buys that, that person is categorized as an external creditor. Hmm. That's so, the most important thing. So, so, so when you are putting out such statements, you need to make that distinction. Because so, so, Dr. Ganiyu, so external bond um, investors on a domestic market also play roles in the external market. Is that not true? The capital market, so to speak. And then also yes, other... But, but, other, yes, other, but that, that is other... 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 Yes. Crediting institution is that not true? Yeah, I'm a, okay. That is so, so, so point. that said, the question no, I asked. No, no, no. The, uh, Roland, the, please hold the on. question I asked you there specifically are. was that: Do you think the sort of communication by the finance minister lends a lot of credence and empathy for the domestic debt holders, so to speak? And that is no, the specific not question. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. The term. Okay. The term. Hello. The term that Please, has always been yeah, used, so so as far as our domestic debt, our concern has to do with the DDEP. So once you mention the DDEP, everyone knows that you are dealing with a domestic debt restructuring. That is the point. You know, so anything on the external front, there are three categories of that. That is the bilateral creditors, the, the euro bond holders, and then we also have the pure commercials. The pure commercials are those foreign banks and whatnot that Ghana owes some money, and that also is around 2.7 billion US exactly. dollars. Exactly. And the discussions are still ongoing, and very soon we should reach an agreement so as far as the restructuring of those debts are concerned. So these are the three categories of the external debt. But as soon as you put in the word DDEP, then everyone will think about the domestic debt restructure. And indeed, that is the impression that has been created out there. So, 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 so it's unfortunate that this has to be the case. But like I said, the finance minister has been very forthright, is very open. So as far as discussions on the economy, on finance is concerned, he calls the media to the Ministry of Finance every month, and he puts out these statements, and he has been very consistent. So I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that any journalist, to be honest, will take this particular figure and create the impression that we are talking about savings on the domestic front. Not at all. And I also sought to explain that it is not meant that way at all. Indeed, the communication of the minister sought to play in the DDEP that has been achieved and that had also a bigger implication positively for Ghana's domestic as well as external market, true? Yes, and, and I've said that that wasn't the impression at all. <laughs> the, the finance minister uh, yeah. uh, did not miss words. He was very categorical. We are talking about external debt restructuring. And in fact, he provided the three levels of external debt restructuring. And any journalist who has his thought should be able to understand 
some of these technicalities, especially when we have held consistently every month an economic update. All the technicalities have, have all been understood, Dr. Ganeyu. All the technicalities fully understood. Can you come again, please? I said all the technicalities, so to speak, that you say have been fully understood. That's great. So uh, once it's understood, so, so, then we don't expect these so, kind of misleading headlines. It cannot be misleading. How is the headline misleading? Oh. All right. Thank well, you very I'm much, Dr. Dr. Abdul Ghani. You are reading on the screen right now, Ghana's debt restructuring, $12 billion U.S. dollars seized. Okay, fine. It has, uh, well, it has been corrected now. I'm now seeing a correction, and that is exactly what it should have been right from the beginning. Now I'm seeing 12 billion US dollars paid from external debt restructuring. And this is exactly what the finance minister said. So your initial headline really did not quote him well. No, that, that cannot be true. That, that, that cannot be true. No, it's fine. I mean, viewers are out there. We've all seen it. We've read it. All right. I know where it came from from the beginning. It came from one of your sister right. uh, media houses. I've brought your attention to that. And really, they admit to it. Okay. And, and I'm sure that is where you took this from. Thank you very much. Now, that Thank also means much, that I, I, I have to bring you in, lawyer Pierre Dankwa. So this sort of communication from the finance minister also have great implications for the bondholders, certainly. And what clearly are the implications in terms of whether the government has empathy for them and then also seems to suggest externally when they go to the road shows and also in international media that everything is fine? Uh, uh, so, uh, I'm surprised you are concerned about empathy here, where really the issue that Ghana is faced with is a fundamental loss of economic credibility. A fundamental loss of economic credibility because of the irresponsible nature Anado's government has managed our economy. You understand? And the finance minister here is making an Alistair Campbell X type of Alistair Campbell. Yeah, you're not Alistair Campbell. That's a that's, that's yeah, a yeah, serious this is, investment. Yeah, 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 doctor. yeah, because what so you see the finance minister right now has become the chief propagandist. Because you see what the issue really is is that because of this debt exchange, people who had confidence in the economy of this country have lost twelve billion. Economy one one tells us that the safest place to place your money is in government bonds. That's, 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 that's fundamental. In government instruments. That's fundamental. Ghana has established that that principle has an exception. And that exception is where you decide to place your money or where you decide to buy government of Ghana's instruments. So right now, beyond people losing their monies, Ghana has suffered a fundamental loss of economic credibility. Nobody will believe in placing money in Ghana. Investors have lost confidence in this country. Now, my brother, my, my former deputy uh, director of communication. I'm still, I'm still deputy. As I said, my former party. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm no longer party. a member of your party. I am no more. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I've okay, left. Okay. I've left your party. I no uh, wonder you use the word irresponsible. A very, very irresponsible. I will address. Yeah, address. because so go to Article 36 of our Constitution when it comes to the directive principles of state policy. Now, if you read Article 36, and with your permission, no. let me read. Now, Article 36 to B. Now, he said that the state shall, in particular, take all necessary steps to establish a sound and healthy economy whose underlying principles shall include affording, affording ample opportunity for individual initiative and creativity in economic activities and fostering an enabling environment for a pronounced role of the private, private, private sector in the economy. Now, we all know that in creating that right economic environment, then you need to manage your your debt, how you handle debt, because see what debt irresponsible procuring of debt does is that it cows out the private sector. Now you you you, you broke down uh, the, the the institutions that 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 took part in the DDP. Well, you know, our land that our commercial banks <clears throat> about thirty something percent of all the monies that were ex that, that that came from our, our commercial banks. Now we we, we are saying as the people. That one of the underlying principles that should govern our economic objective is that listen, 
private sector should take a pronounced role. How is private sector going to take a pronounced role if the government is sweeping all the money from the com commercial banks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if government, who is supposed to create that enable, en enabling environment, is crowding out the private sector, and what do they use those mon monies for? Nanado came on the back of transforming the economy of this country. Came out with a beautiful 1D, 1F program. How much money did he invest there? Because we all know that show me where you place your money at and we'll show your commitment. So you give 1D, 1F just 400 million Ghana cities. You spend 5 billion on NAPCO. You understand? I don't need to rehash the other expenditure because I think AADG has done a good job at that. You understand? But you go and you use it to con as for consumption. You go and borrow money and you those you don't use those monies in the productive sectors. You understand? And then you get to a stage where because of your irresponsibility, because every year since 2017, we've always had deficit, fiscal deficit. One of the abominations of your monetary policy, because when you when you understand what an economy is. The economy simply is the state of any nation in terms of its production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. And we know that government controls that supply of money through the use of its fiscal policy and monetary policy. And one of the abominations of monetary policy is what we call a, a, a monetary financing, where Bank of Ghana finances your, your, uh, your debt and your fiscal. Now, uh, uh, is it not the case that under this regime, Bank of Ghana cannot account for over 60 billion Ghana cities? So we are talking about inflation, the 55, he himself mentioned it. Who caused them? Who caused them? If Bank of Ghana cannot account for over 60 billion, as I to put it in simple terms, 60 billion. <laughs> you have to put it in simple, in, in, in simple terms. So you've, you've managed the economy irresponsibly. Even when it was so clear that the economy was sinking because of your fiscal irresponsibility, you are refusing to go to IMF. We won't go to IMF today, we won't go to IMF tomorrow. Arrogance. Who said that? We won't go to IMF today, we won't go to IMF tomorrow. And then you, are, you go and then you have the opportunity of talking to the world. And you want to gloat on your failure. You are gloating. You want to become Alistair Campbell and gloat on your fundamental failure where you've stolen 12 billion from people who believed in that principle. That's that the safest place to place your monies is in government instruments. You breach the fundamental principle. Mm. You breached it, and you want to gloat over it. Mm. So go for it. You understand? And, and I, 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 keep, I keep keep on saying this. One of the fundamental problems the next government, whoever it may be, whether it's Alan Chemantin, whether it's John Hammer, whether you know, likely even that himself becomes president, whoever, you have a fundamental problem to to deal with concerning the credibility of the economy of Ghana. Uh, what is the FDI stakes now? Ghana's FDI has reduced from 3.28 billion in 2017 to, uh, to, uh, to about 600 million dollars. Investors don't trust in this country. So, you see, so, okay, yeah, so, so, uh, so uh, to end, the minister should not concern himself with propaganda. He has a job to do. And that job is in which way can you raise the credibility of our economy and these statements these propaganda statements plunge us further in that lack of credibility quagma okay so we have a uh, professor of uh, finance with the investor of ghana business school where uh, professor bokpin is joining us good morning to professor bokpin yes good morning Roland, and good morning if you take if you take a look at the structure of our debt domestically we have external players in playing a role, key roles in the domestic market. Now, you have a finance minister who goes on the roadshow and in the foreign press specifically states that an achieved DDEP that has been attained at a cost for holders of government credit who are both local players and external players and then an achieved restructuring with uh, external creditors that we know them, even those in the, in the capital market also play key roles there. That means that everything is well with the country's economy. As an experienced economist, do you think it sends wrong signals or positive signals to those who are suffering in the domestic market? 
All right, thank you very much, and good morning once again. So we can look at this from two angles. Um, from managers of the economy, they are looking at this as positive development, and we want to highlight that as a way of uh, consolidating confidence in our economy. And therefore, the idea is that when you pitch investors, if you are reaching out to investors, prospective investors, you are looking at dwelling on the positive side of the story so that uh, you'll be able to, to because I don't really want to look in the market, you want uh, investors to, to have confidence in our economy because whether we like it or not, um, if you look at the limited inflows from the IMF supported program itself, $3 billion over three years, and you look at the relief from the external debt restructuring, and then again, you look at the domestic debt restructuring, you realize that all the reliefs put together, they are not sufficient to close the gap. So without, uh, and I heard one of the, the panelists talking about FDI flows that has drained them. So without sufficient FDI flows, and then also portfolio flows, we still have a gap that has to be filled, which may bring cumulative pressure on the local currency. Mm. So I think that, that is a perspective that the finance minister is coming from, that you know what, where I find myself, I need to I need to draw, I need to highlight on the positive side of all that has happened. I need to I don't need to avert my mind to maybe the, the impact, the implications, the suffering and all of that because I'm reaching out to investors, I'm reaching out to donor partners and all of that. But I think in the midst of that, um, a certain level of humility would would have been helpful also in bringing the fact that uh, this is a great sacrifice. This is this is this is this has come at a great cost. To, to, to our investor people who believed in us a couple of years ago when we reached out to them and, and said, that, look, put your faith in Ghana government, put your money in, in, in government instrument. It's as, it's as saved as a, as a, as, 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 as to its free instrument. And it, that, that was the same story we told investors a couple of years, some years back and all of that. And they trusted and put their money in them. Unfortunately, we couldn't walk our talk and talk our work and all of that. So, uh, typically, in any transaction like this, whilst government is counting the gains, uh, investors are counting the costs, and then the pain, and all of that. And, and, and we have said that in all our history, what we are going through is the, is one of, is the most pricey economic recovery we have ever experienced post-independence. Right. Another way of putting it is that it's the most expensive economic recovery we've had to go through in all our history because of the sacrifice that people have to make. This is a sacrifice that is direct. Okay. We all make sacrifices through paying of higher taxes and then also uh, expenditure rationalization. But this is another level of sacrifice when the, 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 the state is actually offloading its burden, okay, from the balance sheet of the state to individuals directly. And I think that, uh, and it's been quite enormous. So when government is counting the gain, $12 billion, in fact, in CD terms, the fiscal savings from now to 2037, in terms of reducing interest costs and then also maturity reprofiling, in CD terms, we are looking at something around 61 billion CDs. And that's quite huge. That's cash flows that have been squeezed from body corporates, from households, from All pensioners. Right. Okay. Now, if you take um, the effect on Korea when they had the, the, their own issues with uh, debt exchange um, in the 90s, mm -hmm. you, you take yeah. uh, currently, we, 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 there's always a talk about Jamaica and then even Sri Lanka. What really are the effects, just in three minutes, on interest externally, if Ghana is supposed is to bounce back in terms of buying Ghana's instruments? It's not, it's not going to be easy. Um, normally, when, when you are closed out of the market, of course, depends on how quickly you re-engineer your economic fundamentals and consolidate confidence. You may be looking at three years, others two and a half years, and all of that. But the IMF original program, we are looking at 2027 before probably we can go to the international capital market. So we have to look at how we manage this election 
because this election is also a major risk. Remember, election in our part of the world is like war, right? And all of that. So if you don't manage that well, it may uh, dampen investor confidence in our economy. And then again, it, a lot will also depend on uh, the next government. Okay, so from 2025, we have to put credible leadership on the table. A lean government, a reduced government size, that, that creates the impression that government itself is internalizing the austerity. Government is leading by example. That is the only way you can get invested. That is the only way you can get Ghanaians on board. Because right now, even in the domestic market, if government should issue medium to long-term bonds today, I'm not sure many people will buy it. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Thank, thank you for that clarification. So now going forward, it also means that there needs to be some level of acceptance that, look, these are difficult times and not only going out there to say that everything will be fine for uh, those stakeholders, domestic and external. Kamal Dean. Randy. Oh, sorry, Randy. Roland, let's be fair to the finance minister. His communication or the communication that he puts out there did not only seek to say that these are the gains we have made and that ends it. When you look at paragraph 14 of his statement, he did say, we know we are not out of the woods yet. That's the finance minister speaking. Okay? And that we will continue to count on the support of the people of Ghana and our other key stakeholders to reach even greater heights. Then he went further to enumerate the challenges that we have now. One, we stockpiled some payments at the energy sector that he needs to actually service. We need to get energy running. Money must be gotten to pay for some of this. How well can we do that? He mentioned that ECG must be properly taken care of so that whatever that comes in, the user to service the debt to ensure that we have energy running as it were. He went further to say that social interventions, okay, would not cease because the IMF program in itself sees to it that poverty reduction must be key. To the extent that LEAP has actually been doubled for increase in terms of payment, the finance minister mentioned all this and said, look, these are challenges, but all of us have to come on board to look at it. But when we present in a, 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 a picture as though the finance minister was gloating over some gains that he has made. I think it's unfortunate. I am happy that um, Dr. Gani Dr. Ganiyo set, I mean, sought to correct the impression out there that we narrowed the discussion to only the domestic, uh, if you like, exchange program, which shouldn't be so anyway. But we've all agreed that that is not the case. The external exchange program or the external arrangements that we made or actually constitutes the larger portion of this particular communication that we have. But you see, Randy, as I keep calling Randy, Roland, we should also know that as we sit here today, the government of Nana Adodanko Akufado did not just take Ghana and then run Ghana the way they wanted. As my brother, um, you know, uh, ODG seeks to um, say, one, if you claim we borrowed, and that we borrowed to consume, we borrowed to, you know, if you like, um, enrich our people. That is the biggest propaganda ever I have heard. We sit here, your own flag bearer, John Damani Mahama, who said we could not and we will not establish free exchanges on the whimsical promises of a desperate politician in his West. Today, comes to tell us that, look, Free SHS has come to stay. That money that you're saying we borrowed, of course, has seen your brother, my cousin, who in school. We, we are financing that. Two, infrastructure, TVET. The gains we have made in TVET, that money that you're talking about, we borrowed to ensure that we service that. We sit here, roads have been constructed, unprecedented. We declared year of roads in this country. People have forgotten so soon. And look at the number of roads, over 84 kilometers of roads within the greater Accra. Alone, constructed. As for truly, we are quiet. We are here saying that we borrowed and consumed nothing. My brother, that money went there. Lawyers sat here and mentioned irresponsibility. That we went out there, were irresponsible, we borrowed. I'm, uh, well, for today, he said we are irresponsible. And I'm happy he did mention that I am his former deputy communication director. He was part of the whole, uh, you know, um, you know, arrangement. 
one D one F mentioned. He was all over talking about how the success of one D one F is today. He's telling us that we were irresponsible. Who That's what are you talking about. No, yeah, I'm talking lawyer here. Uh, oh no, you are not part of government. Why are you were part of government? Why are you not part of government? No, 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 no
not. What is this? No. Ask him. When okay. has he done has that? that got, why has that no, got? No, it's because of the economy. Look, my friend. This my friend. My it's because look, of the economy. Look, 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 look. And you see. When you we, talking, look, 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 look. <laughs> I've been campaigning in the Volta region, the coastal areas. Guess what? An Albert motor that used to cost 3,700 Ghana cities in 2016. Today is going for 38,000. Look, the pain and suffering you guys have brought onto Ghanaians. It is not a joke. It is not a laughing matter. And you see, I've always maintained that this Akufuado Bamiya administration is what in our parlance we call Madumaku. You know that? Madumaku. Madumaku. Yediyehu. <laughs> Their mindset is let's eat now. There's no tomorrow. Why do I say this? Look, when the visionary John Muhammad was leaving office, I will tell you, he left you stabilization fund two seventy five thousand. He left you sinking fund two fifty million dollars. Mama visionary. He left you Esla. Do you know that <laughs> Esla alone? You called your mama oh. visionary. I'm, 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 I'm. In eight years. Oh. The energy sector levies alone had given this incompetent, insensitive administration over 30 billion Ghana cities. What more do you require of a vision than that? Heritage Fund. Not only that, the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. That is what John Mahama has done. So in conclusion, I beg you, just allow me to conclude. We need to understand one thing. When you go to the University of Ghana, Legon Hall, they have the motto to whom much is given much is expected only tax revenue credible it's not so many information in your credible and found to hope billion ghana said minus borrowing so you even let's say that that 400 million or billion ghana cities you spent 15 billion of that on free shs where is the rest you have destroyed ghana completely you see, you and talk, you and when we raise these fundamental issues, what you do is to demonstrate humility. And like he said, what my I'm brother not demonstrating humility look, himself. What my brother Ganyu came this morning to do eh? is to basically perform the role of a spin doctor. What do you mean? Oh, He's a technical advisor to the finance. He minister. corrected the you, 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 you see, you you see when you see when Rome work. when Rome was burning, <laughs> and Paronero was playing. That is the kind of situation that we find. Look, Ghanaian pensioner bondholders are going through more pain. When our vice president, the MPP candidate, gets the opportunity, he dances on stage to rub it in their face painfully. Okay. And when all of this thing is said and done, you sit on national television and say, oh, Akufado had increased lip. He does live for you and gives the daughters ambulance contract. Oh. Is that what we want? The vice president does this and gives over 200 million Ghana cities. 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200 million Ghana cities to the brother. It's not even important. I am saying that, 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 The man you speak to had given 200 million Ghana cities to the brother's new contract. Madam Cynthia Morrison. Do you know what it means? Madam Cynthia Morrison, good morning to you. Can you hear me, please? I can. Okay, great. Um, what happened to you and your team during your campaign rounds yesterday evening? Because what we know is that there was an attempt on your life. Thank you very much, um, to your listeners and your viewers. Yesterday, and I just sit down so you had me if you don't hear me properly. And yesterday evening, we went for a program. After the program, and it, it, within the program, it's a convoy car. Um, um, we, have, um, we have a few junction where we normally have our program. And I asked permission from the police, they directed me there, they were there with me in numbers. Then we saw a convoy. Anytime the car, cars are parked, the police will be pulled for them to park. Mm. Then we saw this convoy coming. I didn't know which convoy it was until so it got closer to me. Then I saw the picture of the PC, the brand on the car, so I knew um, they were parking. The cars, instead of them doing a left, they went straight. And there were a lot of people on the road, a lot of people on the road. But my concentration was what I was doing. After I, um, almost to the tail end of the program, the police asked that they put me back in the car because I was standing inside my car. When I got in the car, you let me know what it was. Then somebody said there's a gunshot. Yeah, I didn't hear a gunshot because I was 
close to the music. So when I start in my team start to organize and then we have to reverse. The midway we do use the normal route that we use. Then I got a call from my leader saying I'm asking. But Cynthia, what is happening in Sweden? I'm like, I'm not in Sweden, I'm on my way to Sweden. What is it? He says, I hear your security man took your national coordinator. I said, what are you talking about? My security man has killed the national coordinator. How? And he me from a valley. Then he said, it is not your security. Then he must be one the boy. Then I said, have you been to the scene? Have you spoken to the police? Then he asked for the commander's number. Then I said, I have my commander's number. If you don't have the commander's number, don't talk to me. How do you tell me that my police man has killed so then he said agreement, and then I left, and then came. So the first station, and then three people, including uh, making four, got hurt. I hear Haruna had gun wounds, and then another woman had dressed, and then another head man killed, and another his son. So the police are investigating, investigating the issues. Okay. So if you are not sure, that is what happened yesterday. All right, because uh, the news circulating was that it was an attempt on your convoy and your life, but it doesn't look that way, does it? It was just an accident. And that is what I can say for now. Because seriously, you don't hear the gun show. If right. it was on my life, I don't know. But I must be very frank. I don't want to lie on anybody. That right. is what I can say that I saw. Mm. I love this. And it's good that you put clarity on the subject uh, as well. And then also means that uh, you have clarified yourself. We we'll wish you all the best on your campaign round. Uh, you're, you, you're, you're still going ahead despite all the brouhaha in Parliament, right? Yes, I'm going ahead. All right. So when Parliament resumes, will you be going back to the House or what will you we be doing? We have a good thing. <laughs> You don't want to answer that one. Good, good day. We are talking about this. this is not a whatever happened yesterday. When we get to Parliament, we will close that way. You know. even a member of Parliament, anyway. All right. Uh, okay. uh, this question is. Not All right. Th you thank you very much. Agitated. Thank you, you very much. What, you what, what, what was I doing? I know exactly what he's doing. doing. I'm saying that Cynthia is still a member of Parliament. So to answer what I said, let me give you three minutes. You've given her five minutes. You want to give you three minutes? No, no. Oh, five minutes. Because of yes. time. Oh. Because of Apia. time. Just end for me. So, I think, see, Ghanaians need to mm -hmm. understand this uh, devilish propaganda. You understand? When the MPP or when the government in power is sponsored by a party, it does not mean that everybody in that party is part of the government. You understand? I've never, ever been part and of the government. And you're saying this because? Look, because of what said. That I'm going to listen, 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 listen. I don't like that. I don't do that. <laughs> I've never been part of the government. I was a mere supporter of the MPP. Even when I was in the MPP, I was criticizing them. Especially, I never saw the wisdom in spending five billion on NAPCO and just four hundred million on one one year. For me, that represented doing something to represent something, and it represented a massive deception to the people of Ghana. When you've campaigned on the promise of transformation, yeah, 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 understand. So the fact that you are doing one one F. Uh, and you're not investing enough of your fiscal uh, 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 your, your, your fiscal responsibility there. Clearly tells me you have no commitment to the one one f Secondly, my brother mentioned uh, about uh, uh, the energy sector being one of the reasons why they need money. When they came to power, they had ESLA. They raised ESLA bonds, created what we call the energy sector recovery program, comprehensive program. They themselves said that per the terms of that program by 2023, we we're not going to see do so. What has happened? So right now they are telling us again. You understand? With all the PDS scandal and everything they've done in the energy sector, that they, 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 they want to go and borrow money because of energy. That is that is deception. That is irresponsibility. And we shouldn't be afraid to tell them. You understand? Tell you talk about poverty, uh, alleviating poverty. Why it is right? That when you want to create jobs, you want to deal with poverty, then you, the government, you must deliberately invest money in your small and medium scale enterprises. That's why you will create jobs. It is right. And then we have the example of, the, of, of America that in the heat of the post-Cold War, when economies needed re, to be rebuilt, America, through President Eisenhower, created the law, as in passed a law called the, 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 the uh, Small Business Act, which created the small business agencies. So America, you go to America today, to you have jobs because of the foresight of Eisenhower way back in the 50s. So you come to power, you say you want to transform the economy. You show no commitment whatsoever to SME development. Wow. And you are yet talking about. Wow. I'm coming. Well, in, in, in terms of. Inter, I'm, I'm coming. Please let me land. In terms of 
You know, and I say, see, yeah, it's not about, I'm coming, I'm coming, come, come, it's, listen, it's my time, I beg you, it's my time, it's my time, it's my time, you understand? Well, it's not about, uh, and I said, so this real commitment. In terms of one, uh, did, did you not hear about two months ago, merely Alan Chimantin left office, that the Prime Minister of Trade attempted to, to, uh, to, uh, to destroy the business resource centers. That's when you're talking about SME development, you're talking about giving real capacity building one and two giving them real fiscal strategies you come to our gtp and we are saying that for us eh, part of our strategy would be to create a policy where the banks eh, eh, because they're coming to give a credit guarantee scheme the banks will unleash capital onto the smes you have not done that with all the powers you have over eight years and you are talking about poverty alleviation see Ghana should be focused this is a government timely sacking Dr. Baumia is a man who needs rejection. <clears throat> Let us bring hope to this country. Let us cause Ghana to rise again. And that process will start when we wait for Honorable and John Kulichiman. Well, uh, let me just read a couple well, of messages before we... Uh, yeah, Landlord yeah, Borga yeah, D-Line yeah, says yeah, that yeah, forget yeah. about all what technical people are saying the economists are saying. External inability to pay creditors and also inability to pay creditors domestically result in the suffering of ordinary Ghanaians. And that is very simple. Please read the quote of Michael Blankson, the Ghanaian comedian who invested externally. Is he not a Ghanaian also investing? And he says, what a salary of 1,500 CDs in 2016 could do, a salary of 3,500 can't do it.